Next is the Crossroads 312, a zone change. No, it. I'm not going to open it yet. I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to make a few comments before we start. Okay. There's still much information out in the public, so let me clarify what this public hearing is about. The Crossroads 312 project, as you all know, is up on Route 312. You have the Home Depot project. If you're heading toward Route 22, you got 84, and then you have a vacant property. That's the property that Crossroads hopes to build on. The applicant has requested a zone change. The applicant wants to rezone the parcels from an RC zone to an 8C1 zone. Now, many people have no idea what's an RC zone. Now, I'm going to give you the things the applicant is most interested in because it's more than what I'm going to speak of. RC allows office, restaurant, conference center, hotel, and retail, amongst other things. The zone change they request is to is 8C1 which allows office, retail, large retail, amongst other things. Hotels are not a permitted use. They will be asking a waiver to use the property for a hotel. Now, both zones, RC and HC1, can create jobs and have a tax impact. The maximum impact to the town, regardless of what zone it is, the town would get $153,000 in taxes and the <coughs> fire district, 27,000. Since we have such a large turnout, I want to know by a show of hands, how many people intend to speak this evening? Okay. Now, I don't see as many hands as I planned, but what I'm going to ask to do tonight, we're going to have a few ground rules, and I'm going to change them as I had them prepared earlier because I don't see that many people interested in speaking. Seeing that there are numerous speakers, the ground rules to govern this meeting is as follows. Normally, the town does not restrict speakers to time. However, with such a large crowd, and in order to give everyone who wishes to speak an opportunity, each speaker will be limited to five minutes. No one can give time to another speaker. I'm going to ask Mr. Cullen to be a timekeeper. He announces at four and a half minutes. He'll again at 15 seconds and call time. Now, since there's not that many that plan to speak, I will allow a recall of no more than two minutes. Or, well, the board's going to make a decision on it. They, they can change what I just said. So basically, five minutes, and a, there's a recall, two minutes. But if a lot of people end up getting speaking more than what raise their hands, we're just going to have five minutes. So try to get out what you have to say in the five minute a lot of time. Now, in order to save time, everyone will come up to the mic. Everyone has to, here's the mic that you come to. I'd like you to stand no more than three deep because if someone is speaking for five minutes, you could stand there for up to 15 minutes. So stand there to save time because if you know, someone has to walk all the way around the room, wait for them to get here, it could take up time. Try not to be repetitious. If a prior speaker has already broached the subject that you're interested in speaking to, just say I concur with a, a previous speaker and then add the testimony that you'd like to enter into the record if it's different than the previous one. Now, when you come to the microphone, please state your name and the town that you live. And one thing we all ask, please be respectful when you come up here to speak, please. Now, I'm gonna make, a, well, first of all, I'm gonna now make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, on the motion of the rules that I just read, I'll move what I stated for the record. Five minutes and everyone has an opportunity. And providing it doesn't be more than, say, 20 speakers, we will give a, a two-minute rebuttal if someone wants to speak. Anyone want to? So it's after the 20? If, if more than 20 people come up here, there will be not be a rebuttal time. So if they have enough, they have five minutes to speak, which is quite a bit. Matter of fact, there was a meeting last night. They were given three minutes. We're going to give five. I don't know if our room is as crowded as it was last night, but for a small town like ours, uh, not, you know. So, so with the first 20 speakers... The first Everyone, 20 speakers and then rebuttal would be permitted, but if there's 18 speakers, then a rebuttal would be permitted? Yes. So so for the first 20 speakers, they, every, up to that point, at that point, then someone can come and say it a, a second time. So if there's 18 speakers, number five can now come back and speak again for two minutes. As long as you're not over 20 speakers. Got it. Okay. So get out what you have to say in the five minutes, which I think is fair. Yeah, that's fair. Now. Do we second? That? Second. For discussion. Okay, discussion. Um, I, I'm, I won't be voting yes on this only because I 
am a proponent of the residents and non-residents even speaking um, for as long as you want. With that in mind, I would ask that people not be repetitive, but um, that, that'll, I just wanted to state that for the record. And I'm usually of the same opinion, but seeing the number of people here this evening that might want to speak and setting the limit at 20, once it goes over 20, then I ask that we have the set of rules, because we do have other public hearings as well this evening. And you don't want somebody to decide to speak for an hour. That's not fair to everyone else and somebody may We usually that. don't have filibusters. <laughs> You ever see uh, Mr. Okay, Smith so and, and I do think yeah, that there's could. a lot of people. You know, you might have just raised your hand, but somebody might come up and say something that you now, who haven't ro uh, raised your hand, might say, "Well, now I w do want to speak." So I think that everyone who wants to speak should be given an opportunity, and um, in order to right. to ensure that, we would need a limit. So 50 people end up speaking. Each one has at least five minutes guaranteed. Right. Okay. Now, prior to uh, the first. We okay, we didn't vote. Uh, roll call vote. Councilman Alvarez. Yes. Councilman <clears throat> Cullen. Yes. Councilwoman Eckhart. No. Councilwoman Huda. Yes. Supervisor Hay. Yes. Now, prior to us opening the public hearing, does the petitioner wish to make a statement to the public before we start? <coughs> Good evening, uh, Richard O'Rourke from the law firm of Keenan Bean PC, attorneys for the applicant. Um, if I may just point out before my opening remarks, we have a court stenographer that is here, so I would appreciate it if everyone would uh, state his or her name before speaking, so that information is clearly on the record. As the supervisor said, this is a piece of property that's located across from uh, the interchange of Interstate I-84 uh, on Route 312. But I think one of the most important things to, to mention to everyone here, uh, because there's been such interest in this, I think there has to be an understanding of exactly what's being uh, at issue at this public hearing. There are essentially two components. One is a, 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 a proposal and then the public hearing notice prepared by the town attorney is an adoption of a local law pursuant to the municipal home rule law, which would include changing the zoning from rural commercial to highway commercial HC1. What I think is important for everyone to understand is exactly what is rural commercial. And one of the more important things to consider is what are, in fact, the principal permitted uses within rural commercial. And then we can talk about what's being proposed. According to the, uh, the table, the chart, which I know the town board is, is quite familiar with, as far as principal permitted uses in rural commercial, it's office, restaurant, recreation, and kennel. Now, one of the things that's important to note among the things that have been said in a comprehensive plan is that this particular area is one that is noted for being potentially an important economic piece of property for the town of Southeast because of its location, of course, next to an interstate and on Route 312. One of the things that's important to note, however, is that the zoning as presently in place, and there's been a lot of talk about the comprehensive plan said it should be rural commercial, it should stay rural commercial. I think it's important for the public to understand what is rural commercial. One of those principal permitted uses is kennel. We're talking about 51 acres plus. One of the things that must be noted, that principal permitted use kennel can only be for a non-profit organization and owned by a nonprofit organization. What that means is if that principal permitted use is applied for and approved, <coughs> there's no taxes. There's none. That's one of the principal permitted uses. The second principal permitted use that's allowed is office. It's very important, again, because a plan is a plan, rural commercial says it should be an office use. Everyone has to take note of what the condition is today in terms of the use of office space and the potential for development. 
very important to bring to everyone's attention, the Westchester Business Journal, a weekly publication with a massive circulation, in its January 19th edition this week, the headline is Westchester Office Leasing Anemic in 2014. In other words, there's not a demand in Westchester. There's not a demand in Putnam. There's not a demand in Dutchess. So the second principal permitted use as of right in the rural commercial zone is office. There's no market. No bank is going to lend money to a developer proposing office when there's literally tens of thousands of square feet going begging in the region. At this point, those of you are, that are familiar with White Plains along Interstate 287, Corporate Park Drive, Toll Brothers is proposing a conversion of an office building to housing. There is no market. So the second principal permitted use, rural commercial, right now, is office. We have kennel, which would take it off the tax rolls. We have office, which of course there's no market. The third permitted use is recreation. Principal permitted use as of right. The definitions include what could be some of those uses. One says golf course. This piece of property is 51 acres. Anyone who plays golf, and unfortunately I'm one of those people that tries that, not very good at it, but nevertheless, it's 51 acres. You couldn't get a nine hole golf course on that acreage. The prospect of development for recreation, the principal permitted use under rural commercial is really not there. The fourth principal permitted use, and this is the zoning right now, rural commercial is restaurant. We have 51 acres, principal permitted use is restaurant. That is rural commercial principal permitted uses as it stands now. And there's been a lot of interest and a lot of talk about, don't change it. I've given you what respectfully are the facts. That's the information that's available generally. That's rural commercial principal permitted uses as of right. Alternatively, and what's being proposed is to change the zoning to highway commercial. What's being requested is that the zoning be changed so as to permit the development of a mixed use complex, what's known as a 100 key hotel, which means 100 rooms, along with now 143,000 square feet of retail. The hotel use and its proposal evolved out of the environmental review process that this project has gone through already. And the hotel use was what the public said, what the economic development folks, the people that are interested in tourism, what Thunder Ridge said, the ski area. There's no hotel in Putnam County. So what's being proposed is a use that now is not permitted in the HC1 and is one that would work on this site provided the voting of the, uh, the zoning was changed. The reason for it is because there's a market. The reason for it is because people seem to indicate that that's a use as a principal use that would be inviting, complementary, and useful. The other components of this is the retail, 143,000 square feet. That is smaller than Lakeview. Terry, I'll address that very briefly and well. Um, that use now is not permitted in the rural commercial. So the first component and aspect of the public hearing is whether it should be changed from rural commercial with those principal uses I mentioned, kennel, office, recreation, restaurant, or to allow for the zone change to occur, to allow for the project as proposed. That's essentially the first component. The second component is to change the manner in which the review occurs, and that's this. 
At present, site plan approval is in the town of Southeast done for all projects by the planning board. What is being proposed is that for large retail establishments, such as what's being proposed as part of this application, that that site plan approval authority be changed so that it is invested with the town board, which of course issues special permits, and that town board would be empowered to review the entire project, and it would be up to the town board using the planning board, using the architectural review board, using the wetlands inspector, all of whom would be consultants and would help and work with the town board in that review process and the whole approval process. One might say, why would you do that? Well, quite frankly, it's not unusual. In Westchester, the village of Rybrook, the town of Greenberg are two examples of where the larger projects are, in fact, reserved to the town board. Smaller projects go to the planning board, but because they're big projects, and this is one, obviously, that has engendered a lot of interest, the town board has the authority to make those important decisions. That's a change. There are other examples of where towns and villages have done this. The town of Phillipstown in Putnam County. In Dutchess County, there's the town of Dover. There's the town of Amenia. There are numerous examples of this. This is something, it's not unusual. It does happen. Many municipalities do it this way because for whatever reason they believe that the town board or the village board should have that authority because of important things. Now, those are the two issues that are the subject of this public hearing. Our consultants are here. We have our soil scientists, we have our wetlands, our engineers, our traffic folks. Uh, they're here as resources. What I would respectfully request, uh, if, if the town board wants us to answer a question, please let us know. Or if there is a question that's directed, it be directed to the town board. And please just let us know if you want us to try to answer the question. But I think you have to understand the framework of what is now before the board. And I think I've, I've tried to do that as best as I could. If we could just, uh, with my apologies, uh, if Terry Ann Hahn, our uh, uh, landscape architect, come up, just briefly explain the details of that project. Rick, could you answer one quick question? Sure. Um, could you go over the special permit uses for RC for the public? The special permit? Yes. Absolutely. But as we know, there's a big distinction between special permits and principal permitted uses as of right. And what we're saying is that the rural commercial zoning as it exists today has kennel, restaurant, recreation, and office, which respectfully, if anyone knows the market, there's no market. Right. So that then tells a property owner, why are these the principal permitted uses? And why in the, in the comprehensive plan would one say this is a, an important economic point of development and have as a principal permitted use taking the property off the tax rolls for a kennel. Anyway, as far as what the specially permitted uses are in the RC, bed and breakfast, cemetery, it's another nonprofit. I don't get it. Uh, Country Inn, 51 acres, um, a conference center, an equestrian center, farm, hotel, institutional, nursery, public utilities, kennels, and animal hospitals. Not any of those uses include retail. Um, under permitted accessory, you'll find retail. Um, With the cemetery? No, no, no. no. Oh. No. Um, it, you, it, under permitted accessory, you have restaurant, utilities, private, retail, and services. Yes. I just think it's important. I, 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 what I will say is I've been going to town board meetings, although I've only been on the board three years for over a decade, and 
I can tell you that I don't, I can't recall a special permit ever being turned down. And I just think it's important to, to state what the special permit uses are mm -hmm. and to say that in my, within my memory, I just haven't seen it happen. So as far as uh, uh, the possibility of a hotel, I just want the public to see the whole picture. And um, what you said is, is true, but there's a little more to it. That's all. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm dealing with okay. principal permitted uses. I don't want to have a debate here. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please. So. Uh, Rick, how long is Ms. Hahn going to take? Um, how long? Is that one minute? Yeah. Good. Go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Good evening. My name is Terry Ann Hahn of LADA PC Land Planners. We're the site planner for the project. Uh, just want to go through a couple of brief uh, notations. The project is located on uh, Route 312, which is located at the top of the uh, picture here um, in that horizontal line. Uh, we are proposing two access points, um, both of which are at signalized intersections. Uh, the, um, you would then enter into the property uh, through a 75-foot uh, heavily vegetated conservation buffer, uh, which is required um, under the zone, uh, and uh, into the overall project, which is 143,000 square feet of retail in four buildings, plus a 100-room uh, uh, hotel. The overall size of the complex, um, as previously noted, is <coughs> less than the overall square footage of Lakeview. Uh, similar to town center is about uh, just over a third the size of um, Brewster Highlands, just so you can get a, a sense of context. It is significantly smaller than it was when it was originally approved. Um, and uh, at this point represents, as I said, 143,000 square feet. That would include potentially a bank um, and some restaurants uh, square footage within those buildings. To support those buildings, we have 721 parking spaces, um, and the project would be served by um, private um, water and sewer uh, services and um, would uh, require approximately 35 acres of disturbance, uh, which is what's shown on the plan. Um, all of these items have, were discussed at length as part of the environmental review. I just thought a couple, few facts and figures and sort of what the overall picture looked like um, would make an impression. So that's the end of my Thank you. Okay, as the speakers start to come up, at least get one person in, two more people kind of stand behind so we can keep this moving. There's still three seats up in the front, only three, because one, two gentlemen just got up, but there's still three seats. I think it's people. Okay, good evening. My name is Christopher York. I've lived in the town of Southeast for 26 years. My family has been here for 50 years. I am in favor of the zoning modifications. Um, I originally moved to Southeast over other towns in Putnam because I saw a potential in Putnam, to, in Southeast particularly, to have responsible commercial development. I didn't want to move to a place like Yorktown where uh, the homeowners bear the full burden of uh, expenses because there is no responsible commercial tax base. I didn't want to move to Kent for similar reasons like that. When I came up here, I looked at the Route 22 corridor. I looked at the 312-84 interchange in the 80s, and I said, wow, it's a perfect place for something. That's going to help my taxes one day. I understand the people that want to fight change, keep Putnam looking and Southeast looking the way it did many years ago with trees. It's true. It's lovely. But there are forces extraneous to us that require this, uh, particularly unfunded mandates. Anybody who's familiar with the county budget, I worked for the county for many years, um, it's something we can't control. No matter how economical you as legislators controlling budgets are, the county faces demands by the state requiring more revenue. And without other sources of revenue, where does that come from? The homeowners. There are people here on fixed incomes that it may force them to leave their homes. This is a responsible solution to that problem. Um, I, I've just been a little concerned about, in particular, that full page ad that came out. It almost seems reminiscent of, of some of the political ads that have gone on in recent history, albeit one-sided, because the 
proponents for the developer have not responded to these things. I'm concerned that it tends to create a bias by tending to inflame people's passions and concerns, um, particularly the equating of uh, the increased potential for traffic with someone dying of a heart attack. I, I think if anyone looks at the proposal carefully, there have been tremendous amounts of work and effort and expense being done by the developer here to ensure safe traffic flow. This is an actually an ideal location. There's another attack, will, attack that will crossroads provide tax relief. Not one penny in sales tax goes to the town of Southeast. The county gets it all. Are we an island unto ourselves in Southeast? Don't we benefit from the county getting money? We use county infrastructure, county roads, county law enforcement. We benefit by all these things. The biggest burden to the county are these unfunded mandates. This goes a long way to solving those problems. Everybody, years ago I was at the meeting for the Highlands, the opposition of that. Everybody was saying it was going to be gloom and doom, it was going to be terrible. I bet many of the people that oppose that uh, shop at the Chico's and eat at Ever Ready Diner now and are happy that it's there. I see a similar outcome for this development. Putnam is trying to do things to save taxpayer money. They're talking shop Putnam, visit Putnam. How can we do these things without the tools to accomplish this? Where are they supposed to shop in Putnam? Where can you buy a big screen TV in Putnam? This offers an opportunity for that. Come to Putnam, travel, Libby Pataki, working to get people to come to Putnam and spend money. Where are they gonna stay? Go to Danbury, stay in Heidi's Motel? Are these reasonable solutions to ask people to come and spend tourist dollars in? It's not, we have to address that. Um, I, I know the board faces um, a difficult decision. You all want to do the right and just thing for the people of Putnam. And some people are saying, why are we even here? You know, there's a law, there's a code in effect that prohibits this. But we have to adapt to the times. We can't bury our heads in the sand and what was good yesterday be good for tomorrow. There can be no justice if laws are absolute. You know, life itself is an exercise in exceptions. And I believe Crossroads is an exception whose time has come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Stephen Abels, I live at Milltown Road, 737 Milltown Road, and uh, I'll try not to repeat anything. I agree with what Mr. O'Rourke said. To be really quick, I, I, the taxes are important to me. I'm trying to retire. The school tax budget is exceptionally high, and, and I, I know we get a good education, so we have to pay for it. I'd like somebody else to help pay for it. And all these stores and that I patronize, I don't like to have to drive to Danbury. It's bad for the environment because I'm using more gas. It's close, it's convenient, and I go to a lot of those stores. The amount of time I spend at Home Depot is immense. Uh, as far as the, the, the shopping, it also, my son just was fortunate enough to get a job. I imagine there's a lot of young people around who would like to work in those stores and those restaurants. And, and then when my family comes to visit me, to the extent they're still willing to do so, I'd like them to stay in the hotel. So I just think if they, if we wanted to keep this very rustic and rural, we shouldn't let them put in uh, I-84 because you don't want to have a park next to I-84. It's, it's loud. It's the only good reason for putting the cemetery there because there's the people that are screwed. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Ruth. And tonight I'm here representing the Putnam County Chamber of Commerce. And the Putnam County Chamber uh, supports uh, Crossroads. Uh, we promote any economic development. Um, this project will create over 150 construction jobs and about over 260 permanent jobs for the county if it were to come. As the business owners, as many business owners um, are in favor of this, we, we need people to, we need to shop Putnam, just like everybody else. Everybody else goes to Danbury. We need a hotel here. Somebody, people that can have weddings at our Villa Verone that's in Putnam County, be able to stay in a hotel here in Putnam County instead of staying over in Pigskill Inn or instead of staying over in the Danbury side. We could use those uh, sales tax money here to lower our, our um, uh, state taxes, uh, I'm sorry, real estate taxes, um, and to you know, just promote business overall. 
Um, that's all I have to say. So I'm here to present, and we are, Putnam County Chamber of Commerce is in favor of this, and we can move forward with economic development for our county. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Just one second, ma'am. Could you give your last name for the record as well? Yes, my name is Ruth Ayala. Thank you. Good. Okay. Good evening. My name is Terry Cherimella, and I have two questions. From where, ma'am? I'm sorry? Town. From where? Brewster Heights. Okay. I have two questions, and uh, they're concerns. Um, I'd like to know what sewer and water district will they be tying into? And my other question is, will uh, that district be reimbursed? Because um, Brewster Heights has been compromised several times by the Metro North and by other companies in the area. And our, we pay for our water. We water pay a lot of money for our water. Water and sewer will be coming from the Terravest Park across the street. And what was the second question? It's a private. Tell us private. It's private. Yes. They're going to have private? Yes. If I'm wrong when I answer, please correct me. Yeah. I'm trying I am... to save your consultant some money. <laughs> Hello, I'm Samantha Jacobs. I live on Shore Drive in Southeast. So I am the president of uh, Residents for Responsible Development. So first of all, I'd like to make clear to everyone that our organization is for development. We are for the Rural Commercial Code. So. Since this project has come out, I have been out speaking with the public. And we have been addressing the public about the potential of a beautiful hotel, a family hotel, conference center, banquet center, swimming pool, fitness center, with a freestanding restaurant, something like Cracker Barrel, where you have a mixture of commercial with a family restaurant, places where family can actually go and hang out with their kids and have a nice meal. Then to have additional small retail, something like home goods, something that offers different than what we've got now. So we've been addressing the public, and I have approximately 300 signatures promoting, asking that the rural commercial be maintained. So I will be giving that to you in a moment. I'm actually disappointed at the hotel that the developer is promoting. No conference center, no banquet center, <coughs> no swimming pool, no fitness center. There is going to be a restaurant in a strip mall. So say you want to have a wedding, you're going to Danbury. If you're a business and you want to have a conference, you're going to Danbury. This is just a hotel for people to stop, come off the highway and stop. Hey, and that's not a problem if that's what the community wants. But don't we want family? Don't we want something for us? There isn't anything for us. And then it overlooks 143,000 square feet of retail. As a tourist, would you want to come and stay at a hotel on the edge of the highway with no fitness center, no swimming pool, overlooking a strip mall, no restaurant, a restaurant and a strip mall? So it's really like, it's not providing this prime opportunity for us as families, as a community. And I think we deserve that. Can you speak a little more into the mic too, so we can catch it on sure. the sound, please? Sorry, not used to. <laughs> yes, you are, come on. <laughs> um, rural commercial can provide it. It will provide sales tax. It will provide taxes to the town it will provide less traffic. So we're gonna be getting 900 additional cars per day. We're gonna get four additional traffic lights and expansion of 312. We already need that. The traffic is already heavy. So add another 800 cars per day on that. I think it's 867 cars. Um, I'm also highly concerned about the traffic. Let's remember we have potentially a 500 parking car garage, 367 parking lot right now up for zoning. We have a medical building that's been zoned. 
we also have further development at Terravest that's coming. If the rural commercial zoning is changed, the lot across the street from Highlands is Pugsley's lot, is approximately 100 acres, and it's prime for commercial development. So we could have four corners of heavy commercial development coming our way. I'd also like to um, address the taxes. And, and maybe the developer can answer for me. I don't know where he's getting $860 in reduction. So he's going to be paying $1.4 million in school tax. Our school budget is $85 million. That's 1.6% of the total budget. He's going to be paying $153,000 in town taxes. Our budget, town budget, is $15 million. It's 1%. 30 seconds. Oh, sorry. So it's less than 1%. So where are we getting $860,000? There's 10,000 resi household residents. And if we each got $860 a, a year, 15. you'd have to be paying like $8 million in taxes. I, I, I can't get the figures to work out. So then Putnam County is the one who's getting it. Putnam County is getting the benefit. Okay, time. Does the developer want to re respond to the $860? I know it's a question on everybody's mind. I wish you would answer that. Any, any spoken? You're not going to answer that question? I time, ladies and gentlemen, please. Could, could, no, 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 ma'am. The, the question, the question that's out there now being requested. I don't know the answer to that. Okay, is anyone going to answer the question about the eight hundred and sixty dollars? Okay, see, seeing none, the question is not being answered. Okay. She's done now. Um, the development. Okay. <laughs> okay. Five minutes. No, you're done. Yeah. I'm towards done. Okay. That was the fifth speaker, so we're counting. My name is Ricky Furman. I'm president of the Concerned Residents of South East. I live in Allview Avenue in the town of South East. I've been living here for 26 years. And I would like to read a petition that we went door to door and had people sign. It's 170 people besides the 300 people working with Samantha and Ann Fernese's group. Together, it's between 450 and 550 names that are against changing the zoning. We, the residents of Southeast, strongly believe that the site proposed for Crossroads at 312 project should re remain zoned rural commercial. We urge the Town of Southeast Board to vote against the proposed zoning change on the Crossroads 312 property. While we really believe a hotel, a restaurant, and small retail would be appropriate, we are convinced that changing the zoning would greatly increase the traffic, ruin our view sheds, neg negatively impact our quality of life, and undermine the rural character of this town. Furthermore, we feel that it will set a dangerous precedent for the future of zoning in Southeast, especially as it pertains to existing areas zoned rural commercial, and that is Solinger's, Old Doldsburg Road, Pugsley Road, and Wallach on Route 22. And some of those properties are up for sale and considering zoning changes. I will hand you the 170 door-to-door -door signatures of people in the town that are against it. Now, let's talk about why we've done this and why we're here. Ten years ago, the state mandated every town to do a comprehensive plan and plan their zoning based on the comprehensive plan. In those years, the developers, the residents, 
the town board, the supervisor at that time, and the consultants for the town got together, spent a lot of money, and built that comprehensive plan, and the zoning was built off that comprehensive plan. In the past year, it was re-reviewed, gone over, and the zoning still exists the way it was 10 years ago. And there was a reason for it. The reason that this RC zoning and other zonings were put into effect is to give a good balance of, of residential and commercial, but keep the character of the rural environment that we have. Now, there's two sides of it, and I understand two sides of it. I'm a businessman. I sell all the retailers in the country. I work for a public company. I'm a president of that public company. And we deal with all those retailers. Now, I understand Mr. Lepler, and I understand Mr. O'Rourke, and I understand the county. To them, it's a lot of money. But to the town itself and the people of the town, which the town board took an oath when they took office and promised their constituents to protect their quality of life, to protect their safety, and protect the rural character of this town, which is the most important thing that you have, because this town is different than any other town. And really, most people moved here in the last 10 or 12 years because of the way this town was. Now, it comes down basically to the town board going for protection of the citizens or looking at the money that will go mostly to the county some to the town. And finally, the most important thing is, is that I am in this business, and as Mr. O'Rourke said about office space, and Mr. O'Rourke said about other things, 30. the rural climate today, the retail climate today is a negative retail climate. I'm dealing with these stores, they're closing stores, they're not building stores. Ecom is more important than brick and mortar. And there's no way they're going to fill this up, just like other pro projects that have been approved, like Patterson Crossing and State Line. It is really hard to get a good retail store in to get the money. Time. Time. Ms. Jacobs, did you? <laughs> Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please. Um, before you speak, Ms. Jacobs, did you, the gentleman just left, did you have a petition you wanted to provide the town board? Did you want to present Mr. that Friday. to us? Yeah. And did you, Ms. Jacobs, did you have one too? Do you want, why don't you hand it to the town clerk so she can record it? Okay, ma'am, go ahead. Hi, my name is Lisa Gross. I live off of 312. I am my family, my neighbors. Um, I, I'm going to save a lot of time. I very much agree with Mr. Furman and his assessment. We didn't move here so we could have access to Walmart, so we could have shopping. That's not why we moved to Brewster, not why we moved to Southeast. We wanted a, a great place to raise our children. Love the rural character, love the proximity, both north to the family, south to the fun, love it. I don't see how the tax benefits, you're very, very eloquent, you spoke beautifully, your pictures are spiffy, love them. Don't believe it, not buying it. I don't see how the tax benefits, our, our greatest tax, if we have to move because of our, it, it's the school taxes, not the property, not the town taxes. The school taxes are killing me. I don't see how, I don't see, I don't see the benefit. This to me is rhetoric, it's pap, it's, it's stuff that you tell us to pacify and satisfy and I'm not buying it. I don't buy it at all, no. Hi, I'm Nancy Teague. I live in Southeast, and I'm actually a neighbor of Lisa who just spoke. Um, I moved here three years ago because, again, I like the quiet beauty of the area, and the services were close enough. I moved from the city, so I was used to a lot of services, and I specifically chose Brewster of everywhere I could have moved to. So I don't want to see it changed by a developer who during his presentation 
consistently stressed what the market will bear. I didn't hear him stress what will serve us. You're taking I, I up her time, so please. I, I didn't hear a single reference to why this would help us other than the 153000 in taxes, which based on the wear and tear of 312 and the inconvenience we're all going to have trying to navigate by this space before, during, and after construction, I'm not convinced that it's worth only 153000 to me, uh, to, to me as a resident. And I spoke at the first meeting. I said uh, I was in real estate. I sold real estate in New York City for 20 years. And their developers have to pay a large concession to the city. The mayor negotiates it. Trump had to rebuild a $7 million subway station before he was allowed to develop the west side. So there was no question in Manhattanites' mind what they were getting when the developer developed. Here, all I see is the developers making profit. I don't see what we're getting. And it's upsetting to me, and I don't understand the process here. It seems to me it's already a given, because as two of you voted against it, the rest of you voted for it. So why are we even here? You might change somebody's mind. You never know. <laughs> well, I, I, I would appreciate the answer to that question. I wasn't debating. That was a legitimate question. Can this meeting actually change your vote? Will you have another vote after this are meeting? We, we, this, we're not voting after this meeting. We're going to be voting in probably two weeks' time, possibly, on this issue. I thought you guys already did vote. No, ma'am. Well, we not voted to we accept the environmental impact statement. statement. The next vote will be to change the zone and not to change the zone. I see. Okay, so the next vote is the crucial vote. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So it's not decided. No. no. Okay, guys, get up here and talk. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Kathy Grant. I live here in Southeast over near Peaceable. And um, I just had a couple questions and comments. I mean, first of all, um, are we allowed to take a show of hands to see who's for or against out of the crowd? If they want to raise your hand, if you ask a question, I suppose. Is anybody for it? Uh, the reason. For the zoning change. Yes. That's what we're all here about. Are we going to change the zone or not? Is anybody against the zoning change? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so my questions are, I don't know if they're able to answer. I didn't understand. How many floors is the new hotel going to be? Four. Four floors. Four. And that's with rooms. the current zone? No. How no. many floors are allowed with the current zone? It's 35 I feet, I believe. Yeah. Correct? Three story? She'll check. Continue your questions. It's 35 feet, I think. Um, that other lady had a lot of good questions. Um, maybe I was copying her from the first meeting, but what is the payback to the town? I think we had mentioned we wanted like a rec center or something at the first meeting. Is there anything being incorporated? What was it? I didn't hear that question. Is there a rec center being incorporated no. at all or anything? No, no. there are no con concessions currently. Okay. Um, um, with regards to how many floors the hotel is going to be, that could change our fire department. That was a really big thing in Mayapak. Okay. 30, it is 35 Three feet. Three stories, 35 feet on a hotel current. And the fire department, so you know, they have said that they can handle four floors. They've, they have said that. Am I correct on that? Yes. Okay. No. Okay, come on. Okay, thank you. And then um, just I don't understand the $800 either. I mean, it just doesn't calculate. So I would just, you know, strongly advise whoever has to do those calculations to give us a real number because thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Gerard Telesio. I live in Brewster, uh, right near 312 by the firehouse. And whatever's going to happen is going to happen. People that got a lot of money, they're going to build wherever they're going to build, just like they built the Home Depot that was not there before. 
But if you go to a town like Town Rich, where people are very affluent, that's a very nice town. And they, they live the way we want to live. But because we are, are below financially, we can't sway your opinions, how you vote. We hope we can. Uh, you know, wish we could take home people and erase it and put it somewhere else, but it is where it is. Okay, only thing that I'm going to say is, like when I first came in here, like how people spend our tax money, that we work very hard for it. We were all like this close to one step away from disasters. That's how we live. Whether you put this thing here or not, I don't really care. We know what I care about? I came in, the first thing I saw was these chandeliers. <laughs> I said, what am I in, a courthouse? What am I here? What is this? Who paid for this? Did you pay for this? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. <laughs> I'm a resident. taxes, right? Of course. I look at that and I say, you know, every time I go to North Bruce Deli get my sandwich from South, everybody knows North Bruce Deli? You know that section when the bus is? And you have to go to the other light? Why can't we put traffic light there? It's Number gonna one. I, I hope so. The bridge on Prospect Hill Road, how many years has that been out? Talk to the MTA. And? We talked for three and, and a half, four that, years. And I heard that that railroad was there before that road was built, so it's not their road, it's the town road. You know, we keep getting this, all, all of them. Low government, we get it from the president, and everybody, Republican, Democrat, we just want the truth. And we're not gonna get it here tonight, but you people are gonna do whatever you're gonna do. And as far as Westchester goes, I'm mentioning Pound Ridge for that reason. You know, Westchester is good. Well, you know what? We want to live like in Pound Ridge too. Put all the stuff over there and leave us alone. Yeah. That's what the hell we want. <laughs> but you're going to do whatever you want to do because that's how America works today, whether it's here, there, and anywhere. And that's all I got to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. The lady who said you, uh, you had to go to Danbury for the wedding in Mayapack. You ever been on Route 6? There's a what, nice wedding place there? Yeah. You know you're You don't have to go to the for that. My name is Joy Saro, and I live in the town of Southeast. And I'd like to say that any time I don't have to go to Connecticut or Westchester makes me very happy. I would like to be able to stay in my own town and do my shopping, whether it's for a gift or necessity. I really don't think that I need to be spending my money or my time going elsewhere. Um, that's first and foremost. The other thing that I'd like to point out is that Ladies any money, please, excuse one me. One speaker at a time, please, and come to the mic when you want to talk, go. Any money generated from this project that the county benefits from benefits us all because it will enable the county to provide better services without strangling us to get those services. So that's a win also. The project will promote jobs which our kids need if not the retirees or even um, mothers who are, you know, have kids in school who can't travel far. It provides opportunity. So we're being very short-sighted to say, we don't want this project. You know, let them build it and let them fill it. Because until they fill those spaces, they're footing the taxes. So you know what? If they want to build, let them build and bring the commerce to the area, bring the retail in. It's in an ideal location. It provides minimal impact to our town. I mean, you know, I hear people cry about the views. We're not in the Berkshires. Southeast is beautiful, but you know what? Where they're putting this project in, we already have a shopping district. It's really very suitable. And um, any tax savings that I can benefit by is better than a tax increase. So whether it saves me $800 or $8, I'm for it. I'm not too proud to say, I'll take that $8, okay? And the last thing I'd like to mention is a woman got up and spoke about Trump and his having to rehabilitate a train station. I don't advocate extortion to get a project done. I mean, you know, if we have people who are willing to come here and spend their money and spin their wheels getting a project done, then I don't think that we should have to even think in terms of having them do something else to, before we'll allow them to create their project, to proceed with their project. Um, 
And on a final note, based on what you said, Supervisor Hay, don't go to the MTA about that road being closed for four years with nothing being done. That is the town who has not pushed the MTA to get with the program and fix that road. If I did not pay my taxes, you'd take my house. The county would be swooped upon me in three years, I'd have no home. But the MTA is allowed to continuously renege on their responsibility to rehabilitate that bridge and get that road open. It's a major artery in this town and the town lets them get away with it. So shame on you. <laughs> I, I just want to, um, as far as that bridge and the MTA, we have done numerous things to try to get them to uh, repair it. Liz Hudak and I, before the rest of the board was elected, we even were on um, um, the Mocker television show on Channel 11. We sent letters when Tony came in. He sent a letter to the chairman of the MTA, who lives in Southeast. You know, they're the big boy on the block. We have. Nothing to do. we can't force them to do it, but I just think that should be out there. It's irrelevant. To and this just hearing. so you know, too, the MTA in my mind is trying to shake down the town because they want us to be responsible and do the eminent domain on any of the properties on Prospect Hill, and we're not prepared to do that. So anytime they want to come and fix it, the uh, invitation's open. It's been out there. We've done as much as we can do. There's no sense doing the MTA because they're going to cost you a ton of money, and they're not going to move any faster than moving. Right now, they have $19 million in their budget to replace it this year, supposedly. $19 million. I'll tell you right now, if they can't do it for under three, but they got all kinds of money when they need it, and when they're supposed to spend it, they don't do it. So if they spend $3 million bucks to get replaced it, they won't do it, but they have $19 million in the budget to do it. I believe we've done the best we can, as most we can, and other than a lawsuit, which we can't afford, they, they rule not us. Go ahead, now. Good evening, everyone. My name is Laura Catalano, and I'm a resident of Southeast. Uh, except for the MTA comment, I um, believe the complete opposite of what that lady had just spoken about. I moved, to, I moved to Southeast six years ago. I chose to buy my first home in Southeast <coughs> because of the fact it's rural. I moved out of Westchester to get away from, sh from shopping and the traffic and the crowds. I work in Westchester. I don't mind commuting down to Westchester. I like paying my lower taxes in Putnam. I believe the development will raise our taxes because of police and fire and everything else. That will come, not maybe immediately, but I believe it will happen down the road. There is no tax benefit for us. The traffic is going to be unbelievable. Right now, Southeast gives me the best of all worlds. I work in Westchester, I shop in Danbury, but I live in Southeast. My beautiful little home is in Southeast. I don't want it dwarfed by retail shopping. It's ridiculous. I'm for development, I, I, a hotel, a nice little hotel under the RC code with special permit is perfect. I think that would be fine. Some retail, I think be fine. Although I prefer for us to fill the empty retail that's all over town right now. Yeah. Um, I chose this quality of life in Southeast six years ago, and I'd like you to keep the RC code. It's important. I want to keep living here, and I want to keep having the quality of life I'm having in this town. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Wendy Willette. I live in Southeast, just on the edge of Brewster, right across the line from the village. Uh, I moved here five years ago from Brooklyn, New York, after living there for 20 years. Uh, what this nice woman just said uh, echoes my sentiments. Uh, this is the perfect, the best of all worlds. Uh, I've heard some great arguments about the taxes, um, about jobs, uh, <coughs> and, um, and the attorney who addressed us at the beginning discussed how we didn't have uh, th that with just the, there's no demand for offices. So that's why one reason why we should get rid of this code. I wanna know what the demand is for a hotel. Not just people say, who is gonna come to Southeast and why? What do we have? 
a couple of, we're going to have a couple of retail stores more than before. What we have in Brewster is sitting languishing. Nobody's done a thing about what's in Brewster. I heard from other people who've lived here longer that it was a great place to hang out in the 70s. Why aren't we making downtown Brewster Village the place to go? We've got a cinema that's been closed since well before I moved here. We've got a beautiful bank building that could be turned into a theater. And I'm not just talking about for uh, the, the Bruce, local Brewster company. I'm talking it could be a roadhouse. It could be like Ridgefield Playhouse if somebody had a vision to put it together. Uh, we're going to spend all this money on some piddly hotel and some stores and restaurants when we could be renovating the cinema, renovating the theater. We could take the uh, our art museum out of the little back room of the studio around the corner and put it someplace better. We could take our museum out of the basement of that giant building. This could be a cultural center. It's right there on the train, or at, the, at the train station. People can come from all around, right off the highway. That's what people are going to come for. And until we have a reason for people to come here, I don't see the need to change the code and put in this big hotel. Because there's nothing here. Red Rooster is wonderful. I love Red Rooster. That's the only thing I can see coming here for at this moment. <laughs> and I liked Heidi's. I would stay at Heidi's for that. So if somebody could explain or present to us at some point what the demand for a hotel in this town really is, that could help me make a decision. But at this time, I don't think we need to change the code. Thank you. Other speakers besides that, there's no one standing in line. We get two more people there as possible. Go ahead, sir. Good evening. My name is Michael Terlizzi. I live on Shore Drive. I have uh, been in town of Southeast since 1960. I have been fishing Tonetta Lake since 1960. I inherited property, built my home, and this is my dream town. I was also part of creating the zoning laws that we, we currently have. I adamantly oppose the change. The reason why I chose to stay here is because of the ecology and the environment in Putnam County is so pristine. I have watched Home Depot go in. Uh, quite frankly, we have uh, lights on the parking lot that create tremendous light pollution. We have Kohl's sign. We have a Home Depot sign that can be seen from other galaxies. <laughs> Uh, and it really has dampened the character of our town. I don't see that those that light pollution issues have ever been addressed, even though we have complained in the community. Now that I'm seeing big box hotels, because that's all that is, okay, totally, totally goes against the rural character of our town, okay? To change it, I think, is an insult to the people who live here. You people represent us. What I've heard with all these presentations is how it's going to benefit Putnam County. This is the town of Southeast. We don't have a swimming pool in the town of Southeast. So, Tonetta Lake has served as our swimming pool for our community. It is our, our one place that has aesthetic value, and people come there to relax. With your project, your four stories, we'll peek over the ridge. And we'll have to look at that when we go fishing, okay? I don't think that serves any of us in the public here in a positive way environmentally. What it does to the environment also, you got to understand. We have had community members here donate land on the north end of Tonetta Lake. Why? Because we have a very special ecological place. We have Atlantic white cedar. There's only 100 stands in the world. We are building on the opposite side of that ridge, which totally threatens that ecosystem. The Department of Environmental Conservation has even stated that. You can go through legislative process here and get EPA approvals, but it doesn't make it aesthetically, it doesn't make it morally, it doesn't make it environmentally correct. 
For $150,000 in tax revenue, you must be kidding me to change the character of this town. I, I am really insulted as a resident that we have to come here to put, to put to oppose something like that when we have put so much time and effort into the zoning laws that we have. We did that for a very good reason, because we want to live here. I pay my taxes I have for 40 years. I want to continue living here. This is a quality of life issue. My wife works in Carmel. Going from Tonetta Lake to Carmel takes 25 minutes because of the Home Depot development. I am an uh, amateur astronomer. I cannot use my telescope because of the lighting now. You have, a, you have already affected the quality of my life. Okay? The impact that it will have on our school district is astronomical with the, with the traffic, with school buses. Our roads cannot support this kind of traffic. If you go down any of these highways during rush hour, it is bumper to bumper traffic. Adding another 800,000 cars are going to be cars that don't come from within our community because minimum wage jobs is not what we really, really, really need. Our schools send over 80% of their students to, to college. They do not want minimum wage jobs when they return if they want to stay here and support our community. Also, Mr. Stevens, your aunt wrote a book on Tonetta Lake describing the character and the fabric of our rural community. 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, I, I, I would imagine that she is flipping in her grade listening to this new proposal. My aunt's still alive, thank you, sir. <laughs> Well, I'm sure that she has a lot to say about this project then. So I, I really hope that you respect the wishes of the president that it impacts directly first. This is not a Putnam County okay. issue. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. My name is Keith Goshkis, and I've lived in Putnam County for 45 years, and I'm but, only 45. Putnam County, you said, sir? Yeah, Maypack okay. and Brewster. Um, my parents left Long Island because they thought they could build themselves out of a tax problem. Now, I'm sure all of us have been to Long Island. It's a nightmare. Every inch is built on pretty much until you get to the Hamptons. You cannot build your way out of a tax problem. We can't do it, okay? I don't know how we can solve the problems. But by putting up more stores, it's not going to work. Long Island is a perfect example. Taxes are through the roof. New York City, taxes are through the roof. And they have every inch built on. So all I'm going to say very simply is, you cannot build your way out of this problem. The taxes we're going to get, I'm sure we're not really going to get them in the end. The point is, is it's not going to solve our problem. You can't build our way out of it. And I really don't want to live in Long Island, because Long Island sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Paul DeLeo. Um, I live in Tonetta Lake. Um, I grew up in Queens. Uh, I moved up here about 12 years ago. Um, I actually work in Flushing, Queens, which is probably the poster child for overdevelopment in the entire world for any of you people who know Queens. They tear down one family houses and they build 10 story office buildings on a daily basis. So from my perspective, the last thing I want to see is the place where I've chosen to live, where I've chosen to raise my family, get overdeveloped. However, um, I look around Putnam County, I look around the town of Southeast, and I see empty businesses. Um, would it be a good idea to have those businesses developed? Absolutely. Um, however, I also heard questions here about why do we need a hotel? I'm very involved with the Brewster Ice Arena. I coach at the Brewster Ice Arena. Um, hockey tournaments every weekend. Everybody stays in Danbury. There is a need for a hotel in Putnam County. I, I, we have the bike path, uh, which everyone's trying to say, okay, we're going to use the bike path, bring people up here in the summertime, use the bike path, support the local businesses. Where are those people going to stay? There's no place in Putnam for them to stay. Okay, so what's wrong with having a hotel in Putnam County? I, I don't see the argument behind uh, against having a hotel. Uh, 
question I have uh, regarding this rural zoning, I, I, I don't quite particularly understand that I heard 35 feet thrown out as the maximum height for a building. Is that Current, currently? Currently. Yes. Currently, that's rural commercial. Yes. And the reason that this violates rural commercial is because it's four stories? It's got, they're requesting four stories. Which is, which is approximately 40 feet. So is the big argument here about this being five feet taller than 35 feet? No, it's no. I, what else is what? What's the other issue behind this uh, against this? Actually, I mean, there's not. Uh, there's nowhere in Southeast that allows four stories. Correct. That's correct. Okay. okay. Currently, so, currently, so there's the nowhere. No zone. They're proposing large retail establishment, which is not permitted in the RC zone. So that's really the reason for changing. Okay. The, um, the the fire department argument. It's a four-story building. Uh, I don't want to talk for the Bruce the Fire Department. But I'm a New York City fireman. The Bruce the Fire Department has equipment that can reach eight or nine stories, so this is not, it's a non-issue as far as the fire department goes. Um, what the other point that I wanted to ask? Uh, oh, um, the other question I had is uh, you guys voted and you, uh, on the environmental impact, and you voted yes, correct? Is that what you said to me before? Yes. It you voted a, three to two? Yes, it was a three to two vote. Okay, exactly. and can I ask uh, the reasoning that it was, it was voted positively? You know, it was, you know, it was you guys voted that you thought that the, the environmental impact would be acceptable. Is that correct? No. I, be, I would say the vote on the FEIS was the fact that it was complete with all the questions that had been asked of them. Okay. And then there was a finding statement adopted. The finding statement was adopted. The finding statement was the conclusion of the State Environmental Quality Review Act review. What I'm saying, I don't know if you, you heard me, but the, the uh, the board voted three to two to accept the final environmental impact statement as complete and then adopted what is known as a findings statement, which makes a, a, a numerous findings with regard to the, the environmental impacts and certain uh, conditions that must, that must be complied with in order for the project to ever be built. Okay. Um, and the last question I had, I, I believe you said before about the special permit. Now they would, it, to get, to get this building built, they would need a special permit. That's in, in rural commercial, they would need a special a permit. A special correct. permit, so they would be violating rural commercial, and it would be. It's listed as a special. It can be. It's listed as among uses that can have a special permit issue. Okay, with the exception of the height of this building, what is in what other way does this violate rural commercial? The building itself or the overall project? The just overall project. The large retail aspect. So it's just the, the large retail aspect. Square footage. The square footage. Of it, it allows some retail, but the square footage is. Okay, now the developer seconds. is the one who's funding this project, correct? So if he's building this project, he's bearing the risk of this space not being filled, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and I hear. A lot of people speaking about the developer and, and ten seconds. Um, it's not against the rules to make money in this country. The developer has a right to try and make a profit, and if he's bearing the risk of that retail space being empty, I don't see what the issue is. We need a hotel in Putnam, and uh, I'm, I'm all for it. Now, based on the number of people that have spoken so far and what I see in the line, we're going to go over the 20, so everyone's going to give one opportunity, five minutes. Go ahead, sir. Hi, I'm Jerry Halter. I live in Brewster Heights in the town of Southeast, and uh, my wife and my son and I have lived here since uh, 1998. And, uh, you know, I was leaving the house this evening. It was about quarter after six. I wanted to get here about quarter to seven. And as always, I had that dilemma how do I get to where I want to get to without running into some kind of traffic? I could make my way down through the village of Brewster, finally over to 22 and then hit 22 North, but we all know 22 North northbound as 684 enters into it is, is a nightmare. So my other option is 312 the whole way over to 22 and then I'm on 22 South. But I know 312 around the whole Highlands thing you know, that's a nightmare too. Trains are getting off the, the parking lot for the train station in the southeast is empty. So, but the, this is my daily life. This is what it is day to day, Monday through Friday and the weekends. You know, it changes a bit on the weekends, but same, you know, same situation, but a different 
different outcome. But um, so my main concern here is with the whole traffic of the thing. I won't get into the taxes or all that because it's been it's been said, and I don't see any benefit for myself, my wife, and my son for this thing for taxes. But I just want to read one thing here that it says, and this is page 33, I believe, out of the environmental impact statement. And it's, uh, it says, this is talking about one particular intersection. It says, Route 312 at intersection 84 westbound, interchange 19 on and off ramp. Now that's the one where there's a traffic light already, and they want the traffic light, that'll be, instead of a T, it'll be a cross intersection entering the, the development. No build situation means if nothing's built at all. Results of the analysis indicate this signalized intersection will operate at an overall level of service A, B, and B. It's graded like A to F. During weekday morning, which is A, weekday afternoon, which is B, and Saturday afternoon, midday peak hours, which is 10 a.m. to 4 p 2 p.m. on a Saturday. So right now, as it stands, it's A, B, B. Now this one intersection under build, results of the analysis indicate this intersection will operate an overall level of service B in the morning going from A to B, E during evening rush hour, and D on Saturday peak days. The eastbound and southbound left through movements in lane will experience deterioration in level of service during each of the three peak hours, although much more <coughs> during severe weekday afternoon and Saturday midday peak hours. I didn't make this stuff up. It's in there. This is what's going to happen to us. This is one intersection in the whole mess. And the whole mess. Now, we actually happen to be in a situation where we can have our cake and eat it too. We can do RC and we can get the hotel. This isn't one or the other. We can have both. And I think that's what a majority of us are asking for, both. We don't need the one or the other. We can have both. This is, and here we are fighting over, over what? We can have both. It can be done. And, uh, you know, the, the road's pie crust. 312 is patches on top of patches, and we all know it. And then none of this addresses any of that. We're going to get a few wider intersections because there's going to be more cars. It's affecting the intersection of Route 6 and 312, and I have the diagrams here, but you don't need to see them because you probably guys study these things to no end. You know them better than I do. And it affects the intersection at 22 and 312 also and everything in between. They're going to tweak the traffic lights. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. But in the end, the road is still the same stinking single lane road. It's still the same bridge over 84 that's one lane each way. And no one says anything about what happens. I've sat there on that bridge while traffic made a left onto westbound 84, and I wanted to go straight. And traffic was backed up from the light, turning left to the bridge, and I couldn't move. And this happens today. It's not getting better, folks. RC is the answer to everything. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I've been a resident of um, Southeast since 1994. And your name, sir, and location? Paul Wasserman. Uh, I think, I'll try to summarize this as quickly as possible. Number one, I think the uh, proposed uh, development will have deleterious effects on our environment. I don't know about you, but I'm experiencing more and more uh, problems with the, with the uh, level of the water table. Um, it's going to also uh, uh, it could also have deleterious uh, effects on the quality of uh, of the water that we drink. We don't. Most of us in Southeast don't have municipal water. We have it from our own wells. The second thing is to say that there's going to be. Uh, to say that there's going to be a dramatic increase in the traffic and this won't have any effect on the air quality, I think is, I think is being, um, how can I say it, uh, deliriously optimistic. The third thing is, in terms of the traffic, as is brought out before, number one, uh, we have a lot of uh, kids, uh, uh, it's a high school and a middle school, on or off 312. That, uh, that 
uh, increase in traffic could endanger their lives, the lives of the children that we're paying uh, pretty, pretty hefty taxes to, to educate. It also, in my opinion, can all, uh, affect the effectiveness of, of the uh, fire department and then the EMS in an, in an uh, emergency. I don't see, with all that traffic um, being contemplated, how this will not have a, del a deleterious effect on the uh, response time of either the fire, of the fire department or the e EMS. Uh, the third thing is, while we do get $150,000 in, in uh, tax revenue, I think that's going to be greatly outstripped by the need uh, for infrastructure and, and uh, infrastructure um, expenditure, as well as uh, expenditure of, of increased uh, services to accommodate the type of development that is being proposed. Uh, one more, a few more things. In order to accommodate this traffic, I guess the only way you can do that is by having, uh, is widening 312. I noticed that there are a number of houses on 312. Is, that, is this going to mean that those houses are going to be claimed under eminent do domain? And if, and if so, what houses will be claimed? I think people who live along 312 should know their future, uh, their residential future. One more thing. We'll talk about economic development. As was brought out earlier, the um, proposed project will bring in jobs. There will be lower paying jobs. I would think, number one, it would be more financially sustainable if we have a tech center or a community college. That would provide pretty good paying jobs and it would also help educate our youth in a time of increasing educational expenditures. If you look at in terms of economic development, Scarsdale, well not Scarsdale, but um, Katona, um, Chappaqua, uh, and other, other such other such uh, very wealthy, very wealthy uh, towns. You notice that there are no big box stores there. And as is brought up before, the places where they do have big box stores, they tend to have a, a dramatic increase in uh, ta uh, in um, taxes. So, I think this is a bad project in all, in all, in all its form, and I um, just want to state that. Thank you. And just one comment, sir. There's no eminent domain proposed with this project. None. Well, good evening. My name is Ann Finizzi. I chair the Putnam County Coalition to Preserve Open Space. We have shortened our name to the Putnam County Residents Coalition. We are affiliated with the Southeast Residents. Of, I'm sorry. Talk to the other one. I think it might be is a little it, better. Is this better? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we are more associated with the Southeast Residents for Responsible Development. And we have coordinated our efforts with concerned residents of Southeast. Thirteen years ago, I sat in a room downstairs from the center, the Civic Center. And in that room were the town board, other residents like me. And what were we doing 13 years ago? We were looking at the zoning code for the town of Southeast. We were looking at the master plan. I was not part of the master plan committee, but I was a resident who was becoming increasingly upset and disturbed by what had been happening in my town, a town that I had chosen to come to from the Bronx, like many of you. And so I sat and I listened to the ladies and gentlemen at that time wrestle with the, with the fact, what do we do with Route 312? Because Brewster Highlands was already built. 
And already, there were issues. There were issues surrounding this particular project. And, and residents were upset. They were upset because they saw a change. Yes, they got shopping, but at what price? They saw a change, and they couldn't wait to get home. First of all, they recognized that Brewster Highlands nowhere could meet Danbury Mall. Danbury Mall is 1.2 million square feet. How could you possibly get everything you want in a development that had only 370,000 square feet? But in addition to that, what the town fathers knew at that time was that, the, that Brewster Highlands was not the only development that was going to occur on 312. Over the years, during that time, we've had Unilock come in. We've had Ace Endigo come in. We've had Westchester Tractor come in. We had Quist Properties come in. And there is more coming. And where are all of these developments? Across the road from this development. And the town fathers knew that this particular area was going to be developed to the tune of over a million square feet. Now you think we're going to have a million square feet almost across the way. You know the area that I'm talking about. It's where the DMV is, okay? where Park is. Okay? Where Cornell Extension is, that whole area can bear more development. So we're not just talking about Brewster Highlands 15. and a hotel. So the town fathers and the residents, this was a coordinated, this was a coordinated effort. And we had a town planner, and he suggested a, a zone which would take into account the location, seconds. but also take into account some commercial development. So the rural, cons rural commercial zone was constructed with a special permit for a hotel. Okay, Ann. I, if I may have no. 30 seconds. No. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, also, after this meeting, before this meeting is closed this evening, we're going to extend the comment period in writing by 10 days, which I believe is February 1st, just so you know, so that you still have... To you don't have time tonight, you do have time to put it in writing to us as well. Go ahead, ma'am. My name is Paula Bryan. Uh, I am a resident of Southeast. I live directly on Tanetta Lake. My husband and I moved here four years ago from a 600 square foot apartment on 2nd Avenue in New York City. We moved to our house because we had a beautiful yard and it was on a lake. And we love living here. I commute 50 miles to and from work each day because I live in a beautiful house on a lake. My concern with the change in uh, zoning code is that we are gonna end up selling ourselves out to corporate entities that will serve very few people here in Southeast. I choose to shop at Palmer Brothers instead of the Home Depot. I choose to go to the Brewster Flower Shop instead of ordering from 1-800-Flowers.com. I send my family to stay at Heidi's Inn because it's clean and it's affordable. I support family businesses in this town because I am a member of this community. 
a retail center of this magnitude will kill those businesses that people have spent their lifetimes making. That's right. Thank you very much. Previous speaker and I were probably neighbors uh, five years ago. Uh, my name is Stephen Ross. I live in Brewster. I've been here about five years. I too moved up here from New York City. I've been extremely impressed with the remarks that I've heard so far, and I've been particularly impressed with the recitation of the history that I've heard so far and the tremendously, I have to use the word again, impressive degree of thoughtfulness that has clearly gone into your zoning arrangements so far. It's remarkable that they should be subject to this kind of challenge given how much they are the product of this kind of consideration and balance of the reasonable forces of preserving the town on one hand and commercial development on the other. But my point here today is another, and that is this. We really must be far more skeptical about the possibility of all these businesses succeeding, being vibrant, uh, being nothing uh, other than some magnificent contribution. There's a tremendous tension and uncertainty about these kinds of retail businesses in these areas already. It's obvious. Businesses, uh, stores go out of business all the time in the malls that are already here. The idea that you could be bringing in this enormous construction, many of which will be hollowed out empty stores in the future, is a remarkable risk to take for very, very little gain. I haven't even touched on all the things that have been so eloquently mentioned about traffic and you know, pollution and ecological degradation. But the idea that we can be so confident in these developers' bland assurances that all will go swimmingly when there is so much in the way of stores out of businesses and faltering businesses all around us and empty stores all around us is remarkable. Given the zoning plan you have now, Surely it should not be altered. I ask all of you to be very, very careful about allowing certain <laughs> fantasies or dreams to take you away and to affirm the zoning plan as it is now. Thank you. Good evening. My name is James Bacon. I'm attorney for the residents for Responsible Development and uh, Putnam County Residents Coalition. Just on a quick note, I happen to grow up in the town of Lewisboro, right next to Pound Ridge. And, um, and you know, in the last 35 years, we've all seen this tremendous change in Westchester and Putnam counties, and all the towns trying to react to, to this change in development. And of course, progress is inevitable, but how different towns manage uh, progress is, uh, is, is something to study. And, the, uh, if you remember 312 before Highlands came in, it was, it's almost rec unrecognizable now. And uh, the reason that the board went to RC zoning back in 2002 was exactly because of the, of the Highlands project. Nobody begrudges the applicant from making a good living and, and, and trying to uh, develop his property. But the town had an institu institutional response and the community was all on board with that rezoning and the, and the uh, comprehensive plan that was adopted in 2002. And the planner put, the, put a memo to the, to the then supervisor, John Dunford, which I just have to read a quote. The town has undergone several rounds of zoning and subdivision changes in 2003 and 2004 to implement the comprehensive plan. Specifically, the town has downzoned many areas to reduce potential development intensity in both residential and commercial areas. Three new zones were, were created for areas where less intense development is appropriate. The RC zone permitted uses are also more compatible with community character and would produce less traffic than existing office or retail uses. They are also more consistent with the community's rural character, especially at these important gateway locations. So in 2013 and 2014, while this project was uh, in, the, in the air, the Comprehensive Committee hammered out another, an update of that plan. And most significantly, the 2014 update did not recommend changing the RC district to allow retail. And uh, in fact, Comprehensive Plan stated that the intent of the RC's rezoning should be maintained and that the zoning map and the code should encourage uses that would maintain and enhance the parcel's scenic qualities and rural character. The only change recommended for the RC zone is to allow uses that minimize parking and sewer discharge. Now the project components 
are, are is probably one of the most intense in the, in the history of Putnam County. You've got 240,000 square feet development of a hotel and retail use, impacting 31 acres, 16% to 83% slopes, and seven acres of ridgeline disturbance, and 384,000 cubic yards of soil and bedrock cut. Now this room is about uh, 308 square, uh, square yards, so that would fill this room to 1,000 yards of material, a huge project. 4,000 feet of retaining walls, 30 feet high, 17 acres of impervious surface, 721 parking spaces, and peak hour trips on a Saturday of 857 traffics, uh, s traffic trips. Now the applicant's traffic expert claimed that this project is going to make the, the traffic perform more smoothly in that area. It's difficult to, it, this really seems unrealistic. And if this board has any intention of continuing on this path to, to look at the zoning, it really needs to hire an independent traffic expert to look at that issue. And um, <clears throat> I would note that um, customizing a zoning to, to suit a particular applicant, applicant, contrary to years of thoughtful planning, is not a recommended means of planning. Uh, whether an action constitutes illegal spot zoning turns on whether the action it benefits a few to the detriment of the community and contrary to a well-considered and comprehensive plan calculated to serve the general welfare. So here, it's pretty, pretty obvious that there's benefits to a few. Um, and it's pretty obvious that the public detriment is going to be in, the, in terms of traffic and impacts the rural character, such as the, to the, to the ridgeline. And the, um, also the, the obvious impact upon the comprehensive plan. That's really where the, that's really the, who should be the skeleton for this, uh, for this discussion. How, how is this in compliance with the comprehensive plan? And the fact is, it is not. So um, again, in the event that the board continues to look at this petition, it should reconvene the comprehensive plan committee, determine whether the plan should be changed, weighing whether conditions 15. have changed to the degree where retail and new use is now desirable, and then include the watershed inspector general and other involved agencies in that decision. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My name is Renee Diaz. I live in the village of Brewster, the town of Southeast. Um, we do have some vacant retail space in the village. And um, we also have a lot of other retail space that only serves one portion of our community. Um, I know people are, are saying they don't want to travel, they don't want to travel. If uh, you want to bring in some upscale restaurants and retail space in the village of Brewster, I would, open, I would welcome it with open arms. Thank you. If I could just say, um, I'm sure you know we have no control over the village of Brewster. They have their own government. You should, right? Yes, but you said that there's a need for retail space. Yeah. We got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my name is Ailish Hogan. I've lived in Brewster my entire life, and I came home from college this summer in hopes of getting a job, and there were none. I came home from college this Christmas hoping maybe it would change, still no jobs. I honestly wish more young people would get involved with a project like this because we are the future of this town. And for me, this, is a no, this project's a no-brainer. Thank you. My name is Jim Hogan. I live in the town of Southeast down on Brewster Hill. Uh, I think one of the big questions is what fills the box? And uh, you know, I'm hopeful for a Costco or a BJ's or something, and I'm sure a lot of the people here would might change their tune if, if there was a Costco or BJ's and you didn't have to spend two hours round trip to go to Brookfield to buy in bulk to save money. I'm just, just thinking. But my time is very valuable. Uh, I don't have two hours to go, um, you know, to go over to Costco. And ever since the um, Chick-fil-A went in, it's impossible to go any day except Sunday. <laughs> Closed on Sunday. Because they, they're closed on Sunday. So um, I think that the fact that the, the access to the development there would primarily be on 84. And I live on Brewster Hill and I, I see traffic for all different reasons. And, you know, it's just, it's something you adapt to and it's just, it's part of life. So 
to shut it all that you know with the hopes of shutting everything down for for a project makes absolutely no sense to me but uh, We've heard of, of menial jobs would be produced. Um, I think it's a little condescending to send all the menial jobs to Connecticut and let them connect, uh, collect the payroll tax. Um, we could use, albeit minimum wage jobs, they, we could use more jobs. And, you know, and th those things uh, move into better paying jobs. You know, let, the, let them work the, work the ladder and, and become manager. You know, uh, set goals and move on that way. But I, I just think that uh, I'm, I'm for the, the HC zone because I, I'm hopeful that it's going to be a time saver for, for the residents of Southeast. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bernadette Brandon. I've been a lifelong resident of the uh, town of Southeast. Started out in Tanetta Lake and now I live over in Tilly Foster, so I'm kind of on either end of 312. Um, I think that unless there was a really compelling reason to change the zoning that would benefit the, the residents of Southeast, that it should not be changed. I think a lot of people put a lot of time into um, coming up with the, the zoning code, and I'm, I'm one of those people who would like to see no change, <laughs> honestly. Um, but we made concessions from all sides to develop this, the code and the master plan, and I think that you're I think that we're being asked to make more concessions to have development that's going to be a huge impact on, on traffic, um, a huge impact on the environment, um, lot more light pollution than is already there. I'm a physician and I do worry about time for first responders. I think that that's a real concern with adding that many cars. So I'm against a change. Hi, um, my name is Steve Matson. I live in the town of Southeast. Um, I have a, a question. If, uh, if the town votes to, to change the zoning, and it's now HC1, uh, is that project specific, or does that just mean that's the new zoning? It's project specific. And it's right now, it's RC going to, H the request is to go to HC1. That's the request. OK, so but it's it would be. It's only site specific to this. Right, but it would be this particular project. Like once the zoning is changed, could the developer decide that they're going to change their plans to fit something that would truly fit HC1? Uh, if you're meaning like the hotel, once it's zoned for large retail and they couldn't fill the hotel space, it could be made into retail. Yeah, the let's same. say they said, you know, we're going to scrap the, 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 the hotel <laughs> and we're going to build a Lowe's to compete with Home Depot. They would have to go back through the process, but that... But it would now be, would it be zoned for a Lowe's? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So I think it's important for the, uh, the people here to understand that once the zoning gets changed, there's no going back. All right. Um, and how much, how much tax revenue does the property generate now? Twenty-seven thousand dollars to the town. To the town. Yeah. To about twenty-eight thousand, Tony. Somewhere around, around there. Okay. Right now. Okay. So if a kennel went in, we would lose twenty-seven thousand. Yes. Okay. Not going to kill us. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I don't think the zoning should be changed. Uh, you know, I contributed a very small piece to the comprehensive plan that we just redid, and a lot of people put a lot of work into that. And everybody has made those points. Uh, I think the changing the zoning sets a precedent. Uh, we change it for this particular project, and the next developer wants to change something, and they get a no answer. We end up with a lawsuit we cannot afford to fight. Um, I moved here to get away from traffic, as did a lot of people here. Um, I, I should probably say I'm not against unreasonable development, but. Um, I like living in a park-like setting. I like the fact that I don't have stores on top of me. I don't have time to spend two hours going to Costco. I also don't have two hours to get from Brewster to Carmel, which is why I don't want all this stuff built. Okay? I, I think the risk to Lake Tanetta is very big from runoff. Um, that's a big selling point for anybody who has kids. I spend a lot of the summers there. If that lake gets ruined, 
there's not going to be a whole lot of reasons to come here unless you're a really big shopper. Um, I, I do think we need economic development, okay? Um, but everybody's talking about what we shouldn't do. I do want to make a positive comment. That economic development should be three things. Unique, not easily duplicated, and experiential, meaning something you do, right? Shopping is passive. Uh, we're close to New York City. We have a lot of local history. We have a lot of outdoors. <laughs> there is actually a lot to do here. Um, and those are the things that will make us unique and make us attractive to tourists. <clears throat> strip malls do not fit that bill. Because we build the strip mall this year, and the next town over builds it five years from now, and it's, that's the new structure, and that's where everybody goes. And we're left trying to figure out what to do with this big empty building. Um, I also believe that you know, developing does not help taxes because <laughs> I've lived in Westchester, I've lived in upstate New York, I've lived in Arizona, um, and I can tell you my in-laws live in Anderson, South Carolina, and they move there because their property taxes are much lower. There's a lot less there than there is in Long Island. Um, and I also have to go to Danbury and Fiskill to shop, and you know what? I'm glad I do, because when I come back here, I think, thank God I don't <laughs> live in a place like that and have to deal with it every day. Hi. Let me know if you can hear in the back, because I couldn't. I'm Sydney Ackerstein, and I live in Brewster, not very long. But I have some questions. I can't believe none of these were asked before. What are the shops you're talking about? What shops are, what retail is going in there? They're unidentified at this point in time. They're unidentified. So we're just hoping? Praying. <laughs> uh, and nothing about a restaurant? We don't have any idea about a restaurant? I mean, somebody... There's a potential for one, but no guarantees. Uh, well, no guarantees. Okay, what are the jobs going to be that, that we're getting? No, no one would, is going to go into the location. You have no idea what the jobs are going to be. Other than, well, if a hotel comes as well. If you had to guess, what percentage of these jobs would be minimum wage dead-end jobs? You don't want to hear me on it. <laughs> <laughs> Did I interrupt you? No, no, no. no. I, I, was, I would not comment on that one. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Well, the only... Sorry, say it again. The minimum wage will go up. It may not be as low as it is right now. Anybody here live on minimum wage and support a family? Anybody? Okay, so this is the only good thing I can see about this project is with all these jobs at minimum wage, we will finally, finally find a place for the uh, Guatemalans to work year-round, and they need that. So otherwise, I don't think so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, quiet please, go ahead Mel. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Hi, my name is Annette Gabriel, and um, I recently moved to Brewster, but I've lived in Patterson for the 15 years before that, so I've been traveling through Brewster, shopping in Brewster, and living basically right next to Brewster uh, for, for a good portion of time. And I recently moved to Minor Road, which is just off of 312. And I just have to tell you, I, I, one gentleman spoke about, we just have to learn to live with it. I live every day in fear of making a left turn onto my street. Okay? Every day. Today. Not with a whole nother 800 cars daily driving on 312. I, it is not safe today. They are driving too fast, and it's a blind turn. It's awful. Okay? So I want to know what needs to get fixed today before we start piling 800 more cars onto 312 on a daily basis. It's unreasonable today, okay? <laughs> Number two, $150,000 in tax revenue, ex additional tax revenue. What does $150,000 get us? So let's think, if we have eight, if we have 100 
visitors or times two because maybe it's two people in a room if you have 200 people staying in a hotel and there's an emergency uh, heart attacks or people need we that is going to tax us as a community how are we going to address if there's an, a larger scale emergency at that hotel um, how are we going to address how much does an ambulance cost one additional ambulance I bet it's more than hundred and fifty thousand dollars if I had to guess so I just want to really ask is hundred and fifty thousand dollars in extra tax revenue really worth the risk of what of what we can support okay so I agree with a lot of the other concerns but the traffic and what does this really get us I, I'm just not clear and so I'm also about responsible development so keep the code as it is and let's let's do what what was intended versus trying to do something. Thank you. Okay. Now, as as everyone knows, we we set the guidelines prior to that was the twenty seven speakers, so there'll be no rebuts at this point in time. You can, again, I'll announce at the end of the meeting, there'll be a period of time you can send in for 10 days written comments as well. Good evening, I'm Keith Napolitano. I'm a Southeast resident. Um, first of all, for the people who are complaining about having to drive to Danbury to do your shopping for toiletries and t TVs, that's like moving next to an airport and complaining about the noise. Yeah. <laughs> the people who are concerned about hotel in our community, I believe there's a project on Route 6 that should, off of Route 6 that should be going forward soon. And the hotel that's proposed for the Crossroads project may or may not get built. There's no guarantees that that hotel is going to get built. Um, okay, <clears throat> trying to be quick, so I'm going to skim through my notes here. Uh, reading the flyer that they sent, uh, they advertised the project has been cleared by various agencies, including the Brewster Fire Department. First of all, I have to do a little disclaimer. I do not represent the Brewster Fire Department. I do not represent the Brewster Joint Southeast Fire District. I represent myself as a taxpayer and a homeowner in this community. Uh, with that said, my background, I have over 27 years of service to this community as a volunteer, and I'm also a career firefighter from Westchester County. I read the... I read the letters that the uh, Crossroads Project posted on the website from the various uh, emergency service uh, leaders, and one of them was from the Brewster Fire Department. That was over two years ago. So my question uh, about that, one, was, was were those letters written in response to the original application from the applicant for the smaller project with the smaller hotel and the lesser traffic, or were they in response to the new project that's being proposed now? I, it was for the bigger project. Well, it was, it was, the original was much bigger. So this one scaled down from that time okay. to that response. So those letters were for the bigger project. Okay. And my other question, and I, and I know that at the time that letter was written, since it's over two years old and two chiefs ago, that that chief did not have the benefit of a completed FEIS and traffic study to make, to make a determination uh, in regards to the response times. They do address manpower, they do address apparatus, but they do not address response times. Uh, as, for those of you who don't know, it's a whole volunteer fire department at Brewster, just like the rest of Putnam County. Your volunteers, when there's an emergency, get paged out, they get in their cars, they drive to the firehouse, they put the gear on, they get in the fire apparatus, and then they respond to the call. Okay, so when we're talking about the increased traffic on 312, keep that in mind, that, you're, that your firefighters have to get through that traffic in order to get to the firehouse before the fire apparatus has to get through that traffic yet again to get to the emergency. <laughs> Response times matter more now than they ever have in the past, in 30, 40 years ago. I can't get, with, due to the time constraints, I can't get into it, but the furnishings in your home, they burn faster, they burn hotter than they did year, 30, 40 years ago. Fire moves quicker. The, the materials at homes and, uh, are being built out of, they burn hotter, they burn faster, and they fail quicker under fire conditions than they did 30, 40 years ago. Anyone has more questions about that, see me afterward. I'll, show, I'll give you links to the studies and the videos. Um, I waded through the traffic study, okay? Uh, first of all, all the improvements that are uh, proposed uh, for, the traffic, uh, for the traffic have to be approved by the DOT. There are no guarantees that all those improvements are going to be made, number one. Number two, they talk about adding four new lights. One of the lights is going to be at the green glass building, which is just a few car lengths away from the entrance to Home Depot. Then one of the other lights is just a few car lengths away at the entrance to Applebee's and the access road to Home, to, uh, to home Depot. You're going to have three lights in several car lengths of one another. <clears throat> 
can you honestly tell me, the folks who are support, the folks on our board who are supporting this project, can you honestly state that you believe that this is not going to result in gridlock? Can you honestly state that? Seriously. Okay. Uh, okay. And oh, by the way, 312 corridor is the primary route for ambulances coming from Putnam Lake, parts of Patterson, and parts of Brewster in order to get to Putnam Hospital Center. They have to get through the heavy traffic, which is going to include that two-lane bottleneck that goes over I-84. That's going to be on. Uh, that's going to go between these two major pro projects. Um, I watched the video of the December 18th meeting, which I didn't. Uh, I, I wasn't able to attend. And two of the council members spoke uh, at length about a lot of reasons why this is a terrible idea. Only one person spoke in favor uh, of the project, and they read from the they read from the traffic study directly. <clears throat> um, and basically, they said that. Uh, Traffic is a growing problem along 312 corridor, whether we have this project or not, whether there's any mitigation by the developer or not. Um, so we should approve the project so the developer seconds. can approve pro Really? That yeah, quick? I'm sorry. Holy cow. Okay. Uh, let me just say this, and I'm going to skip ahead. Uh, first of all, uh, okay. Superv Supervisor Hay made a comment at, at the 1218 meeting uh, that. You're going to have to wait on that so you can send me a letter, please. <laughs> <laughs> If anyone here believes that this isn't political in nature, that money isn't involved here, that okay. politics aren't involved here, yeah. you're not that naive. Anyone else here to speak to the matter? Okay. If you haven't spoken, please come up and speak. You don't get 15 minutes of fame here, you only get five. Good evening, my name is Edie DeVito. I'm a resident of Southeast on uh, Oakwood Drive. We moved here about four years ago. Um, I'm in favor of the change. I'm in support of the development. And I spoke to uh, this body at uh, the last meeting that you had in, uh, with the same um, ideas that I had before. Uh, so I'm not going to be repetitious, but I want to say this. Let them develop the area. We need the shopping here. We need the revenue, and we need the jobs. <laughs> and if you decide as a group that this is not going to happen, then I want to ask you, who has the authority to remove the signs to shop in Putnam? Thank you. Hello, my name's Tom O'Brien. I'm a business agent for Local 21, Plumbers and Steamfitters of Westchester, Putnam, Duchess, and Alston. I myself don't live in the southeast area, but I do patrol it. I've seen no real development in a number of years there is no opportunities for kids to get jobs, adults getting it. You build it, people will come. You know, this isn't going to be a McDonald's or anything like that where people are going to be going in and out all day adding this excess traffic. There'll be people coming. They'll have options if they want to stay here and go. Maybe when they come up here and they say, they say, oh, look, this is a nice place. Maybe we'll move here. Whatever. There's a number of different things. So as far as I'm concerned, opportunities can present themselves when you put something here that people want. And that's all I want to say. Thank you. If other speakers do want to speak, please just form a little bit more of a line so we keep this moving. Okay, sir. How you doing? Uh, my name is Vern Nickerson. I live in Putnam Lake. I've lived in this area my whole life. Uh, my 11-year-old daughter's over there playing on her Kindle that we drove to Danbury to buy because she can't get one around here. When we go home, she's going to bed. If we got home earlier, if this meeting wasn't as long, she'd watch her TV that we bought in Danbury. There's nowhere to buy anything. And it, somebody said something about taking down the Shop Putnam signs. That's like my pet peeve every year around Christmas when the local commercials come up that say Shop Putnam. Like, you can't Shop Putnam. You try. You, you can shop at Kohl's. That's it. Kohl's, which a lot of people didn't want. They, nobody wanted that there. Nobody wanted Home Depot there. Um, and then... They seem to be pretty busy, like all the time. I've gone to Applebee's, 
It's not my favorite restaurant, but I've gone there. And uh, you wait in line if you go there on the weekends. You know, they're busy. They're creating that. And as far as the traffic impact on, on that stretch, I lived here before any of those places were, you know, before Home Depot and, and all that was, was there. And that stretch of road kind of sucked then too, pardon the language. <coughs> You know, when I was 16 years old and got my first uh, taste of driving, I didn't like driving through there either because it was slow. And as far as the development, um, talking about the open spaces in Brewster and the open spaces in Carmel and go there and you, they've got places, that's not what people want. People want to be able to get on and off the highway. If you build something off, just off the highway, you're going to get people to go there. The reason why these you know, the big box stores do so well where they are is because they're usually fairly accessible. Um, the ones that are off the beaten path, I mean, they don't build them in the off the beaten path areas. They build them where you can get to them uh, fairly easily. We don't have anything like that here. You know, I, you know, I drive 22 every day. I go to and from work. I'm also a member of Local 21, and uh, I'm an officer in the local. And when I come home from work, I hit that stretch of everybody going to Danbury and 84 and everybody's in the left lane trying to go right and I come up this stretch of 22. I've only been in this building a couple of times. It's usually like traffic ticket related stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but that, this stretch has never been good. But that's just how it is and like you know that. I live in Putt Lake. I love where I live. You know, it's a nice community. and. But when I come out here, even just to come out to 22, to talk about the movie theater. Like, we have the one movie theater over there, but it's, that's, it's not a real theater. It's not a big theater. And then as far as uh, some gentleman said something about, you know, living in this area and not, you know, we don't even have a pool. Like, I guess he's not a member of the Elks Club, which is right up the street. He could go swimming at the Elks Club. Um, I, I'm for it. I'm, I think that, you know, we need to have something here. And as far as... I don't know if any of you have relatives that have come and stayed at your house. I love my family, and I want them to stay in a really nice hotel when they come visit. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to drive all the way down there if they're to do it. So that's just what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? Who did Tony, Tony um, I have a lead. There's still someone coming. Okay. Okay. What? You no, no, I, don't know if coming. Um, I just wanted to say um, I received a letter to be read, um, but my phone has died because okay. the meeting's so long. From so we'll Schwartz, submit it. The Schwartz family? No, this is from Bob Dumont, um, who is a merchant in the village Schwartz. of Brewster. Okay. I have two letters from the Schwartz family, yeah. Seven Oaks Lane. Uh, there are two letters to be entered into the record this evening as well. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Seeing. Okay. Right. Are we going to speak to him? Hmm? Can we speak to him? No, I wouldn't. No. Uh, good evening once again. Uh, it's Rick O'Rourke. Um, the purpose of this is, is merely for the, the purpose of correcting misstatements and omissions. Um, there was a statement that was made earlier that the, uh, the town should have its own traffic consultant review this. Our traffic consultant is here. Um, the town did, in fact, have a traffic consultant, and there was an omission in terms of some of the data that was um, quoted in connection with that traffic. Um, the second thing is that you have to take a look at the principal permitted uses. That's the big deal here, and what we're proposing is not permitted under rural commercial. And what is permitted as of right under rural commercial, as I said at the beginning, is kennel, takes it off the tax rolls, office, there's no market, recreation, it's not going to happen. Okay, that's So not, anyway, that's but anyway, as far as the traffic. Please, please. please. So, so, but I think it's important that people understand what that was because some may have come in late. That's number one. Number two, our traffic. Ladies and gentlemen, please, we can only hear one person at a time. Our traffic consultant wants to. Hey. Please. A traffic consultant wants to just address the statistics that were stated by one of the residents 
in regard to the traffic impacts and the level of service. Because certain of that information was not properly stated. That's all I want to do. Thank you. May I do that? Well, he can talk. Well, I, I like it. I mean, they were quoting from documents that they had in front of them. Are you saying the documents were not accurate? No, I'm stating that what they did was not, <laughs> they did not quote what the, what the level of service would be after the mitigation was put in place. It's totally misleading. It's a misstatement. Let's hear what he has to say. Thank you. Okay, can you do, can you do it in five minutes? I could do it in one minute. Okay. Go. <laughs> My name is uh, Steve Cipolla. I'm with Frederick Clark Associates. Uh, we conducted the traffic impact study uh, for the crossroads development. Um, as mentioned by one of the residents before, the change in level of service at the, uh, I believe it was the westbound ramp, which would be opposite the proposed driveway, which is going to go from a T intersection to a four leg intersection, okay. mentioned that uh, there would be a deterioration to level of service Fs from no build to build condition. But if you go to the section just beyond that, there's the, uh, the build with the mitigation. And with the build with mitigation, all that intersection will operate at acceptable level of service, very similar to what's currently out there for all time periods. OK, so what, what they, he used letters. What letters are you going to use? He used. He used that it would operate at a level of service. Yeah, speak a little it, more into the mic. He said he would, it would operate at a level of service ADB during, during uh, each peak hour. He, he read originally what current is. Okay. Yeah, the, that's the current. Okay, A, B, what? A, D. A, D, B. Okay, sir, why don't, just why don't yes. you look over your shoulder because he's referencing you. Just see if. <laughs> Let's see. So this is 312 at 84 westbound. This here, actually, what I see here is actually from an older report. It's not from the latest in the FEIS. All right, so if it's BED here. After build, what are you saying it's going to be instead of BED? This, this looks like it may have been from when the, the development was a bigger use. Okay, but my question is the same. Yes. So under, under a no build condition, it would be A, D, B. No, under, that's, that's not what it has. Yes, okay. because, because sir, it's from, because I think it's from we, an older Sir, report. let me, the gentleman, when, with, what document did you get that from? Did yes. you get it from DEIS, FEIS? Do you know which one? Yeah. Which one? Online. To be honest with you, I would so much stuff. I know. Over the past <laughs> I this is, what I have here is from the FEIS, the latest document that was accepted. So that, that looks like it's from the DEIS, which was probably the bigger development, which is now scaled down. But the no bill would remain the same. Right. Yes. The no bill wouldn't change, right? No matter what, if it, the no bill circumstance would remain A B B, right? That wouldn't change, no matter what you do. With it. Correct. <laughs> but, if, but, if, but if you look, it's A B B. Now we have A D B because there were other developments that we had to add into the background that came to light after this fact that we were asked by the town traffic consultant to add. So that so okay. Okay. so it's shown worse than what's there. Okay because we added more development. Okay, so in the build state, Better it becomes, what does it become in the build state on your? It becomes BDC. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's similar. Yeah. It's similar. I mean, you're off the ladder. But if it was my kid in school, and he came home with ABV, and then he came well, home with BED, well, he'd be in trouble. Well, if you, if you look here, it's BED. Right. Okay, we, have, we have BDC. Okay, I'd like you to take that offline when you're done. Thank you. Okay. It's an all. Uh, okay, anyone yes. else? From, is, do you have, Rick, do you have anything else? Okay. I think that was good. 
Hi, my name is John Leppler. I'm the developer's son. I've actually never spoken to the board. I've been to a lot of meetings over the years. And I see a lot of familiar faces who are against every project, including a ball field. Anyway, that's not why I'm up here. Um, again, I'm very upset when I hear about these jobs being, you know, they're not good enough for us. One of my best friends, his mom is a, she worked at a flower, the Bristol Flower Garden. Single mother, did what she had to do, worked tons of jobs, but she worked at the Brewster Flower Garden, which is referenced before. He, no father in the picture. He now, his first job was working in a restaurant. Then he was a bartender. Then he was another bartender. Then he tried school. That didn't work very well. He went to Brewster like I did. Now, the bartending skills that he learned and all the work ethic and the work ethic he learned from his mother who worked these low paying jobs that you guys, a lot of people are making fun of. He worked these, all these jobs and he worked, watched his mother's work ethic. He now owns two restaurants and he has a cell, cell tower construction company. He employs over 100 people. He learned how to work by starting in low paying jobs, low skill jobs. That's how you learn to work. My first job was for a gentleman sitting over there. I made $5 an hour. And now I have my own business. That's all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Erin Marr, and I live and work in the village of Brewster. You guys want to talk about traffic problems? Did anybody come to the village of Brewster in the summer? You guys are all complaining about the traffic on 312 and Route 6. Well, I live and work in the village. And this summer, the DOT shut down Main Street to one lane. One lane. OK? All these traffic mitigation issues and everything like that, all these problems that are going to be happening because this is going to get built, and it will get built. Let's be honest. You know, we need a hotel in this area. It will probably be built. But with all these traffic issues, the developer shouldn't be waiting on the DOT. The village has been waiting for the DOT for sidewalks since Sue Kelly gave money for sidewalks in the village of Brewster. The DOT has been holding off on a bridge repair that's falling in over the Metro North track. The DOT, we can't wait for that. And I honestly think this is a good project. I think maybe it should be built, maybe it shouldn't, but you know what? The mitigation of the traffic should be the burden of the developer. And the developer should know the things about Brewster and all the, all the problems that we have in the village of Brewster in terms of traffic. He's the master developer of the village of Brewster. The village of Brewster voted him for it. And you know what? He's going to build this project? I think it's a good idea. But make him pay for the traffic problems, all the problems that we're having. Cold Spring, the guy who's building the Butterfield project, they're giving him the same kind of problems that we're giving him now. But they're making him make sure that he's doing this and he's, you know, watching his P's and Q's. We should be doing the exact same thing. And you know what? Don't complain about me, to me about traffic. I live in the village of Brewster. My life is traffic. It's horrible. But you know what? Make him pay to fix the traffic before you approve this. Thank you. Helen Dorkin. Brewster. I have a question. Does Can you H lower the mic a little more? I can't hear you. Sorry. Helen Dorkin. I live in the town southeast. Okay. And I have a question. Does the HC code include a hotel even with a special permit? No. no. Does the yeah, HC right. zone with a special currently? Yeah. With yeah, the HC. A yeah. regular HC zone. HC. Does no. it include no. a hotel even with a special permit? No, it, it can, not current. It can build without a special permit. No. You, you can build it without a special permit? No, 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 it's not in there. Ashley can, can, can uh, Ashley Ashley confirm this, but no. Uh, there's currently no hotel committed in HC 130. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the HC code does not require a special permit use. Okay, so they could do it no. only with a special no, permit. Today. If, okay, if, if they want to build today in the HC zone and put up a hotel, the answer is no. The current RC zone, they would be allowed to do it. And the HC zone that, that, it would, that they're proposing, you would also need a special permit 
like you would in the RC zone to build a hotel. Okay, Does but they could sense? do it with a special permit. Correct. Not right now, but if this passes. If this passes and this if the, change If there's occurs. a zoning change, that's the proposal. Yeah. So our current one won't work for them no matter what. Yeah, correct. You're correct. Okay. I'm confused because I thought you had said earlier under the current zoning that they could apply for a special permit. Yes, you can. You can. They, right now, our rural... Okay, wait, time out. Sir, let, let, me, let the lady and then you come up and ask the question if you would. Continue, okay. ma'am. Okay, well, I, that's what I wanted to know if that... Because it's not clear to me Okay. What that so is. So, currently, with a special permit in the RC zone, currently, you can build a hotel. It would be three stories, not four, right okay. now. Okay, so you, that's what if the you're, problem if you, is. He's, he wants a four-story... No, no, it's not, actually, it's not. It, it, I mean, yes, it would be in addition, but right now, he could anyone by special permit, if it's granted, could build a hotel in the RC zone. Right now, if this were just H, already zoned to HC1, and Ashley, please correct me if I'm wrong, you cannot build a hotel even with a special permit. Is that correct? Right. That's right. Okay. So if it gets, so if it's changed. The, the, the if, applicant is asking it to be changed from RC, which you can build a hotel, to HC1, which would now buy a, a waiver, not a special permit, with a waiver or a special permit, can build a hotel. But if they wanted to do it today, if we zone HC1, they could not do it. What they're here tonight and what they're asking the town board is to change from an RC to HC1, which would allow the large retail and through a waiver from the town to build a hotel. Is that clear? Uh, that's clearer. I, because I thought that with the current one, they could still ask for a special permit to build a hotel. No, no not in the HC zone. Okay. All right, thank you. No. Yes, in the current RC, they can, but yes. in the current HC rule, HC is not applicable to this spot right now. Yeah, it, I'll explain it quickly Mr. again. The, uh, Mr. Darkin, come here a second. I'll give you my phone number and I'll explain it to you tomorrow. <laughs> um, right now, in the RC zone, a hotel can be built by special permit. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Forget the stories, forget it right now. Right now, the HC1 zone does not allow a hotel <laughs> even with a special permit. Does that make sense? Okay, so is there any other clarification that anyone needs? Come up, there, come up, come up and if you ask. Only pertain to this question. Just for this question, so we can get this squared away. Yes. I think that there is, if, and you can correct me, I think there is a, a, a confusion among, among the public as to what is this zoning change. The zoning change is to have the HC1 code include a hotel and include a large Re retail unit. That's what the H HC1 code is. Okay? No. It is. No, no. It is. Ashley, Let's have Ashley, Ashley come, come up and yeah. answer. Well, I think perhaps the best thing we can do is have the Ashley, planning yeah. consultant come up and explain it from our town. Yes. Okay, and there's not going to be a rebuttal, so she'll explain no, no, the situation. No, no, okay. Okay, we'll give her some room. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. So the existing RC1, or sorry, the existing RC zoning district permits a hotel or conference center to be constructed as a special permit use. The applicant is proposing to rezone this parcel to HC1, which currently allows a large retail establishment to be constructed as a special permit use. They are also requesting that a hotel be added as a special permit use in the HC1 zoning district. So once it's rezoned, they are also, in addition to that, asking for... Um, Don't go there. <laughs> it will confuse them more. You're going to talk uh, about the waivers for the, the other three waivers? No. Yes. 
Well, I'm not even no. Okay. Okay. Tell them the three other waivers. Are there are additional. <laughs> el- <laughs> there are additional that elements that are being uh, included as part of the <clears throat> zone change petition, which would allow a waiver of the height of the hotel, the height or length of a retaining wall, and um, some exceptions to the Ridgeline Protection Ordinance. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. Okay. Anyone else wish to speak? Who didn't speak? board members could you just lift up the mic and the, maybe the many of the public may not know who you are my name is Harold Leppler I've sat and listened to all the individuals and all the comments and I'm not going to try to rebut a clarification a lot of reference has been given to Brewster Highlands it's a project that I was involved in from the beginning. Coles, Home Depot, now DeChico's, Everetti, Applebee's. That center is 100% leased. There's no empty stores in this economy. Our latest estimates are about 700 plus jobs, full time plus part time. What I've heard about the taxes paid to Southeast, and I am a resident of this town. Southeast on the Highland Center, not a theoretical, but one that we built, pays a few hundred thousand dollars to the town of Southeast. But it pays approximately a million and a half dollars to the Brewster Central School District. That's a direct impact on every taxpayer in this town. It paid, and that was, one of the county officials was at one of our recent public meetings. It pays $5 million a year through sales tax alone to Putnam County. That's your tax bill. That service is provided to every resident in this community and to this county at large. I don't think that's inconsequential. The jobs are very meaningful. If anyone has gone to any of the job fairs, I'll just give you an example. When the Chico's opened, and they took the space that was formerly occupied by Lennon's, there were hundreds and hundreds of people lined up hours in advance of the store opening to take applications. It was touching. There's been a lot of statements made about impact on the community, environmental, traffic, cultural. And I believe most of the statements that have been made have been sincere. But the same comments were made when Mount Ebo was developed, when Hudson Valley United Cerebral Palsy was coming in, when we did the nursing home, when we did the senior housing, what do we need these people in our community? I mean, I was embarrassed and ashamed at the comments. The projects that some of the people here are living in, we heard the same comments, whether it was Fieldstone Hunter's Glen, Reed Farm, and about six others. Got to have a little more understanding and a little more compassion for some of the other folks. People are living here and people are coming here. There's no place to work for the young people within your community. And the attitude of not, you're not developing. You mentioned TerraVest, Ms. Finese. How many people are working now at some of those facilities? You got to look at what the overall impact to the community is and what is required to have sustainability. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Okay. I'll make a... No, I was going to say, can we say stuff? Or... Do you support what I say? Speak? Well, I just want to clear up some things that I read. Okay, okay um, just a couple of things that were thrown out there, and I think Mr. Leppler kind of touched on it, but the $150,000 taxes, that's just the town portion of your tax bill. If you look at your own prop property tax bill, majority, 70-something percent, goes to the school district. So we all live in Brewster School District, most of us. A lot of the money goes there. It goes to Putnam County, too, and that's the bigger portion of your tax bills. Um, someone spoke about fixing up Old Town Hall in the village. I don't know if she's still here, the uh, theater and uh, the museum. The town tried to do that. Okay, the voters voted it down by 300 votes. There was a very good, successful proposal to get that up and running. And unfortunately, the taxpayers, voters didn't want to vote for it. So, just, so I don't know if she was aware of that or not. And um, the people are talking about the school buses and all that and traffic and it's going to affect the children and asthma. Um, Personally, myself and Ms. Fenizzi did ask the school board to weigh in on this project, and they refused to. Um, so if you have a problem with that, speak to them, okay, because I did try to get them to speak about the school bus situation, and they won't um, give us an answer. So, And then the pools, too. People saying we need a pool in this town. We also had a proposal to have a rec center, and it got voted down. So I just wanted the new residents to be aware of that. You want Oh. This is more public. You have any reason? No, I, I think we were here tonight to listen to the community. There are people out there. Each of you have a very uh, pointed view. If you didn't come up to speak, we heard your applause one way or the other. I would encourage who, who didn't come up tonight to speak to weigh in by letter uh, during the 10 day period of time. I know that there's people who, you know, just are not, you know, didn't feel comfortable coming up to speak. I would ask that you do so and know that this is a very uh, thoughtful <coughs> board. Uh, of course, people come up and they say, well, you know, why are we here? That, there was one woman that said that. Well, you're here to speak. We are here listening to you. The point really is, is that what we need to do is to listen to as many people as possible. You weigh in in person or you weigh in by letter. We've been inundated with letters from both sides. And when I say inundated, unfortunately, it's um, just a fraction of who really live in the town. Uh, when all is said and done, I believe that when I last checked the um, different, different uh, totals of who sent us letters, it was probably somewhere near the area about, let's see, uh, 207, 122, 107. We had non-residents. So from residents, we had 14, about 400 responses. We now have petitions that were handed up. There is um, just signatures on these. But when you, when you look at it, we probably have heard from about 1,000 people in our town. And there's a lot, of more, lot more people out there. So I'm hoping that we hear other responses. Because 1,000 people from all of the people in the town, it would be great to hear more. But we're here to listen. So, um, and I was impressed with people that came up tonight. And I appreciate it. So, but um, like I said, tonight is a time for me to listen. And I can say from past meetings, based on what we heard this evening in favor and or against the zone change, I think you see the same representation on this board with people supporting and not supporting. So you're, you're being heard. And there's no way I can vote for both. <laughs> I mean, you just can't do it. I have husbands and wives that are, they're not battling over it, but one wants to shop. Of course, that's the wife and the husband doesn't want it. So, <laughs> you know where it goes. Okay, I make a motion to keep the public hearing open for a written comment period until Monday, February 2nd at 5 o'clock. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 I make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. We're going to take a three-minute recess and another public hearing to follow. Aye.